popcorn, piss, and vinegar, giving you a raw take on movies, television, and pop culture. My name's Chris. I'm Scott. I am JB4. And with us today, Mr. Rick English of Got the it. Molly Ringwalds and uh, our, our longtime musical brethren. So, How yeah, are you? You, have, you have problems with your, your cans? or They're a bit loud, man. They're a bit loud? Okay. It's because John's is... deaf. Hey, that what happened? Correct. Good job. Good job, Scott. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, there we go. Is that better? That? Is that better? A little yeah, pleasant. And yeah. get, on, get on that mic. So. Yeah, that, well, I didn't want to. There I'm we blasting go. Blasting my damn ears out. Now you're on that Easy. mic. That's Thank it. you. All right, so um, Rick, Rick's, um, Rick, Rick is part of the Molly Ringwalls, Pierce Penniless, also um, uh, uh, Stash Gordon. Stash that's right. Gordon, that's it. Go just shot the reason, right out the reason why I'm saying Stash Gordon is because I like the original name of the band, which oh, was here we go. Queef instead of... <laughs> Thank oh. you, Bobby. <laughs> Instead of, instead of Queen, they wanted to name it Queen. Uh, is $3 bill even a thing anymore? Or? It is. Okay. It's a yeah. thing of the past. <laughs> oh, okay. No, no, it's, we just it's, aren't the Mollies haven't too? been able to do it. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, like, we are a well, thing of the past for the present. Yes. Yeah, but isn't there, isn't there like, <laughs> isn't there like 40 motherfuckers in that band? 41. Yeah, right. Yeah. So it's the thing. Yeah. Try to get 41 guys together. Yeah. You know, it's a, right. it's a bitch. I can't even get five guys together. Oh, yeah. Fucking yeah. I, 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 last time Four I, guys Last together. time I saw you guys, the, the $3 bill project, which was which is uh, kind of like a, a tribute to mellow gold 70s mm-hmm. music and, and 80s as well. Um, Alan rocks. Parsons project all the way to uh, Bread and Ace and all that good stuff. Um, shit. I think last time I saw it was like, Seven principal members, and then y'all had like a six-piece horn section. So it was like a good thirteen guys up on stage. Yeah. I mean, it was fucking crazy. I wonder if it was the one, not the last time, but the time before that, where we just hadn't gotten together. There was absolutely no practice, and I think we had gotten completely drunk on stage. The we one, were, the one that I saw. No, this this goes way back. This is one where Jeff okay. Long was actually playing with you okay. guys, and I only remember seeing him on one gig with y'all. Right. Well, this was one we think. I, I, the joke about it was we have two hours worth of music. We played for three hours that night and didn't get to everything. Wow, that was a good show. So that yeah, that's one of those shows <laughs> where like, like it. that's one of those shows where it's kind of like, hey, hey, do you know you know that? Yeah, yeah, fuck, yeah. I know. Yeah, I can get through it. I, yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, why and then not? At the end of it, no, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> do you hey, want we tried. Video of that? Uh, the audience didn't give a fuck, but uh, you know, it's all no. good. But. Poor Jeff leaned in. He's like, what is going on? Like, I don't know, but it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's some good times, man. Yeah, Justin and I went, went through that shit. You know, another thing, which is a thing of the past, only to come back every now and again. But, right. uh, but yeah, Justin um, Justin and I was the same. Hey, man, do you know this? We, we had a guy one night come. He was like, hey, man, can you play... Um, I want to put y'all up on the on the '80s challenge and like whipped out like these obscure kind of '80s something not not obscure but like upstairs at Eric's B B and C hits, mm. you know like and and he's like I'll give you ten dollars for each one you play I like look at Josh I was like we're gonna play every one of these motherfuckers, right. nah dude it was like um head over heels by fucking you know by tears for fears and shit like I said B hits oh, not like Go-Go's not like their main B-hit. right in, not their in, main head over heels the Go Go's like um. Well, no, well. no. Head over heels is 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 uh, um, tears for fears. Wow. So yeah, that, yeah, if he'd have asked for Desert Moon, but Dennis DeYoung, that would have been. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, no, no. We're not talking. Yeah. We're not talking that. Get a obscure. shovel. Yeah, yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so, but that's cool, man. Um, you guys, before we delve into what we we wanted to bring you on to talk about Bohemian Rhapsody, because I mean, if there's any Queen expert that I know, it's going to be you. <laughs> I mean, I know you, you uh absolutely love this band. So, um, I, I've I've read uh. Read the reviews, kind of heard some of your stuff on Not Real Radio, and it's kind of what I expected. But I figured we give you the uh, we give you the podium here to kind of expand on that a little bit. As have you not as seen it? I haven't seen it yet. I think I John's. Not, oh, you haven't seen no, it. Scott's see seen it. We, I have. We've we've talked. We've spoken. <laughs> That's why he's over across the room. <laughs> Yeah, so no, uh, it, we we come to grips with the fact that everything everybody hates Scott loves, and vice versa. I figured so that out too. Much, like, yeah, right. Jesus, it's pretty much how it goes. Oh, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm curious for you guys if if there is a feud to have it, but there is actually a, a two cents uh, another uh, past guest on Popcorn Piss and Vinegar offered uh, Scott Allen Perry, 
who uh, has a really salient point, but I first want to hear more about the movie. Well, before, before we before we jump out. into Bohemian Rhapsody, or as, or as I call it, Bo Rap, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let, well, let's let's jump into some trailers here real quick. Some sure. of the stuff that they dropped there in the week. Oh, okay. Since we've last met, which was a couple of weeks ago. Um, first up is uh, today they released or a couple of days ago they released a new Aquaman trailer. And anybody check that out? I've Saw not it. seen it. Um, no, it's uh, I mean. It, it, it looks like a fucking superhero. It's all movie. the same. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a typical superhero trailer. So, um, mm. goes a little bit more. I, I don't know. I think between that, it, they gave us like a five minute trailer. What a couple of months ago, and now which they had cool. an additional two minutes, which is like all new shit. So now we've got seven minutes of the fucking oh, movie. Okay. So you know that's that's that shit. But I mean, it's like it, I mean, I can't really elaborate on anything. It's fucking. Is there any more like uh, bro moments? Well, of course, dude. It's Momoa. Of course, right. there's bro moments all over it. So, yeah, Bro-mo. I mean, you check it out. I mean, I, I'm sorry to know I don't sound enthusiastic about it, but it's typical superhero fare. Hey, wasn't that movie supposed to come out like now? And now it's yeah, coming it was, out like December 21st, I think. Yeah, it was supposed to be released originally in November, and then they pushed it back to like it's like a few days before Christmas. This just gives you yeah. an idea of how far Chris has fallen because we started this podcast because of his speculative excitement for DC. Yeah, you seem to be really yeah. on that bus and yeah, um, I'm, I'm oh, off that is, bus. Yeah, now you're trying takes... to cut the brake line on that I, I, <laughs> I'm trying to roll it off the side of the cliff if I can, man. Shit. A four and so. a half year long descent or however long we've been I remember you and I having a conversation back then. I'm like, I don't think, you're, I don't think it's going to work out. Nah, man, it's <laughs> fucking bad movies, dude. I mean, that's the thing, but... Yeah, that's when you get an asshole in charge. That's kind of how it goes. Mm-hmm. So, see, if this asshole was in charge, it'd be different. But I'm telling you. So, I don't know if anything can save DC, but that's my opinion. Yeah. The only thing that can save them I at this point oh. is to go back to their original formula, make good movies You know that, that really thrive on these characters, and don't worry about beating Marvel. Just do your own thing. Leave it to Warner Brothers. Yep. So. Pretty much. Um, next one that dropped, um, and speaking about unenthusiastic, uh, uh, the teaser for Toy Story 4. Um, I yeah. Mean, yeah, I was all excited. I'm like, oh, to a sto- the Toy Story 4 trailer, and it was not anything. It's them in a big circle, and they're singing. A, there's some song playing in the background, and it just like the camera is just With like the, the spork around. or the spoon. Or yeah, they have like a spork, yeah. a spork that that has to yell that it's not, a toy. not a toy. It's it really, a tease. It's yeah, not it's a, a trailer. It's a, yeah, it's it's complete hey, teaser. It's, yeah, it's coming out. That's they just. Yeah, right. right. Hey, yeah. Toy Story 4 coming soon, which I'm still not really sold on this movie. Oh. I, I like the original three. I think four is totally unnecessary. You, but, you well, won't know until you see yeah, it, dude. Right. Toy Story, so far, man. man. One, it's two, and three have been... It's a perfect trilogy, man. I mean... Well, maybe it'll be a perfect quadrology. Quadral- yeah. yeah. Quadrology. I know that uh, Tom Hanks, it was reported, got choked up reading his uh, last lines. I mean, you know. Ooh. I yeah, mean, right. I mean I, 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 Woody dies in the end. Oh, I got choked up when I fucking saw Batman versus Superman, and I bet it sucked. You know? <laughs> I call it Batman loves Superman. Yeah, right. there you go. <laughs> All right, um, mm. this one came out of left field. Um, Detective Pikachu. Have you seen this? Right? The Pokemon. Yeah, it's um, it's going to be Ryan Reynolds plays Pikachu, oh, and the person who who discovers him can understand him and he sounds like Ryan Reynolds but anybody else that talks to him it's the Pika Pika voice Mm -hmm. so only one person can understand him and the person that understands him sounds like it sounds like Ryan Reynolds this movie I mean dude I'm Pokemon is probably three generations removed from me yeah dude watching this movie and Mm -hmm. how it looks and Man, fuck, dude! If I was a if I was a '90s kid, man, mm-hmm. I'd be all over this fucking thing. Well, it looks they really sort of have. Good. I mean, with the, good. the Pokemon Go kind of resurgence. Yeah, but I mean, but, some... but but the Pokemon Go resurgence is being played by like 25 year olds that like grew up with that shit when they were like little kids. Yeah. Well, it's already like so last year, right? I mean, I remember. Yeah, it's like so Ollie, two years when, ago when Ollie yeah. was all over that shit, but. Like last I saw her, they ha- they have a new one now last. that's uh, Ghostbusters yep. that does the same thing, same and, thing, and yeah. Laddie did all the art for it. They, oh. they had a the, Harry oh, Potter too. The, They're about the, to do it too. The company that um was developed by a Korean company. This company mm-hmm. contacted Laddie, and Laddie did like all of the like um transition art for it. It shit. got really good reviews too on yeah. the, the the nerd sites. I did hmm. not know Laddie was involved. I may have to get it now. So. Yeah, so Laddie Laddie's all over that shit, and he was he was uh, uh, pumping it up on the on a not real radio so cool awesome. stuff nice 
Um, and the last trailer, which, you know, um, uh, uh, Dumbo, which is the kind uh-huh. of extended trailer, it, it looks really fucking good. It I does. Mean, looks it looks really like something good. that will make Scott cry. Yeah. Uh, now, now, uh, now, John, you finally saw Christopher Robin, didn't you? I did. You? Was was this movie as as was this movie fantastic? Did, it was did it, entertaining. Did it hit you in the yeah. feels? It n- not n- not with the impact and significance that it hit Scott in the feels. I was sort of. Did you see Christopher Robbins? I wanted to. So, right. but I mean, Daredevil in the bathtub hit Scott in the fucking feels. It did. It did. <laughs> not true. <laughs> I mean, he, but uh, but but you were talking. I mean, I couldn't resist. You were talking sorry. like it was going to be in the top ten at the end of the year. Like, oh yeah, it, it was movie like of the was, year. Yeah, it, it but, was uh, far and away the most emotionally moving. And I was like, uh, oh. But dude, okay. I have to admit, from from what Scott said about Christopher Robin, I, I, I'm going to be more prone to feel that about Dumbo than I am the the Chris. I'll, I'll Did probably, you see Christopher Robin? I didn't see it, okay. but but I was I wasn't a Winnie the Pooh kid. Gotcha. I was a Winnie the Pooh kid. My kids a Winnie the Pooh kid. No. So I like uh, Winnie the Pooh. That's why I'm curious about seeing it. It's right, good. So it's, it's a very good movie. And it's the same guy voicing it that's voiced all the. All yeah, it's the all, the, the, all the all the Disney cartoon. Yeah, From they the, got yeah. all the all the voice actors so that did them in the animated. If your kid watched like my friends Tigger and Pooh, it's this, it's that voice. You're gonna hear it. All right. Yeah. So it From isn't Tigger anything I'll do. So yeah. It's nothing. I'm I mean, just, and it looks like good. It, it looked really I'm good. I'm just a fan of the, the, that particular genre of Disney. Well, I mean, we were talking about it before you had gotten here, and and the thing with Disney is that they're doing a lot of changes now to not only the parks but just to their brand, and it really comes down to man, look, young kids don't give a fuck about this old stuff anymore, and that's the reason mm-hmm. you're seeing a resurgence of it being mm-hmm. recreated, and especially something like Christopher Robin. They're like, well, you know. There's a, a dozen other cute characters that are out there that are connecting with kids, but if we can find something that connects with adults as well as children, that might give the Winnie the Pooh the boost that it needs. I'm sure it's a fine movie. We, we just love Boston Scott's It balls, is. So. It, it is just not as amazing as I thought. That's, that's all. Well, there you go. And, you know, we're all entitled to our own opinions. Oh, oh, and last trailer. Um, uh, a Deadpool Before Christmas, I think, oh, is yeah. it? Or, yeah, it, they're doing a PG-13 then I'm not seeing it. Well, well, well <laughs> no, no, but this is will. what's great. What they did was to cut the movie, Deadpool is telling a story to Fred Savage in his bedroom from The Princess Bride. Now I'm seeing but it. It's okay. adult, I'm but I'm it's in. adult Fred Savage. <laughs> and what's great is, is that the tagline at the end of the trailer is, he says, well, you know, you're a Marvel character. And Deadpool says, well... He says, "Well, he says you're not Marvel," and Deadpool goes, "Yeah, we're totally Marvel." And he says, "No, no, you're not Marvel. You're just a cheap licensed ripoff to Fox. It's kind of like the Beatles being produced by Nickelback." <laughs> nice <laughs> and music. And fucking Deadpool. Yeah, Deadpool sucks. sits there and says, "You were so awesome when you were a kid." You know, so, it's just, so yeah. very, very well done. I think it's going to hit the PG thirteen. I mean, mm. John, I, I, I have to agree with you. I think the a lot of the dick and fart jokes got its run in the first yeah. two movies. And this character is a gold mine integrated into these other Marvel characters like the Avengers. Yeah. If they tone it down just a little bit, you know, and, and I, I think that it'll it'll fit well. He's I mean, the Bugs Bunny of the Marvel Universe, and he's right. about the only person you should keep the same just so he can meta comment as he's integrated in the Marvel Universe and everyone else's. But you know who you should add to that mix? She-Hulk. Oh yeah, yeah, fucking. Oh, she's absolutely. another one. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a, I think that's a, a, a another good character yeah. that they if they could yeah. make that kind of like a little pocket thing where it's She Hulk, Deadpool, Howard the Duck, all those characters, yeah. and it's like the yeah. Muppet Show. The other characters just kind of show up and they mm-hmm. fuck with them, but right. they don't really integrate into the larger story. They kind of sit back and and crack jokes and shit. Yeah, I think that would be really awesome. Good call. So it'd be perfect fit. Well, before we get on to to, to, to Bohemian Rhapsody, um, I want to read this quote from Brian May. Brian May was asked if Freddie Mercury would have liked this movie. Oh, Jesus! So this is Fred. This is Brian May's um uh, response to this question. I think he would have felt it was a fair cop. It shows all his greatness and all his fallibility and insecurity the whole bit. I think it shows him very truthfully and not sycophantically but in a way that appreciates his talent. Because he was sure unique. I'll never meet anybody like Freddie in my life before or since. 
and it's probably not going to happen again. Before you, before you say any words, oh, I've already read that shit quote anyway. <laughs> <laughs> As Chris is oh, reading wow. that quote, Rick's face is like just buried in his head. Like if there were the meme, that would be it yeah. right here. Well. Yeah. Let's go back to the beginning of the production of this movie. This is a movie that's probably been in the making for about probably 10 years. Mm -hmm. And originally was supposed to be played by Sasha Baron Cohen. You know, the Borat and and, and, uh, and, and uh, uh, Ali G and Bruno no. and all those characters. Rumors before that was that Johnny Depp was in line for that. Ah, uh, mm. so, so there you go. Um, from what I read about Sasha's portrayal of Freddie Mercury is that he wanted the movie to really drill down on Freddie Mercury and show something similar to like like what Stone did with the doors. That's that was a real kind of like right. really showed the essence of who he was and the things that he did and how he triumphed. You know, how he was kind of like this multi dimensional kind of character. Because yeah, these are real people in these movies, but I mean they're we're watching characterizations of them. Um, that's kind of what he wanted to do. But uh, they said that Queen was very against uh, Baron, Bar uh, Sasha Baron Cohen even had said in one interview that uh, when he talked to Brian May, he says, okay, well, how are we going to tackle the stuff with the relationships and all that stuff? He said, well, we're not even going to talk about how he was gay. And that was pretty much, a, you know, mm. Cohen was pretty much like, well, dude, I mean, then you're pretty much wasting my time. That's not, I want to I want to do something that really really gets down into the into the meat of the character so that's where all this starts time goes on as time does brian singer picks up the production brian singer loses his fucking mind he gets fired another director takes over um i would imagine that probably roger taylor and brian may were probably had a heavy hand in the making of this movie probably um because what i heard is is that this is supposed to be this this is like a uh, article to add queen to, to introduce queen to a new generation that's some of the things I've heard, but but that's where we're up to at this point. So okay. fo follow us, follow us, uh, 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 bring us along for the next part of here. I don't know, man. T making the movie like that, like you know, what are we going to try and do? For Which they put, they they've tinged it with the gay theme in this movie. But to say something like that is say we're going to make a Superman movie, but he's not going to fly. It, it's that's been discussed in the past. <laughs> I mean, yeah, well. <sighs> And it shouldn't be. Right. It was discussed, and that's as far well, as... Well, it was like Kevin Smith was talking to John Peters. When Kevin Smith was contracted to write a Superman movie, John Peters, the, the producer, who was also a producer on Tim Burton's Batman, he said, um, I don't want to see Superman in that costume, especially not that cape. His words, it's too faggy. That's what, what he oh. said. Well, I mean, dude, you're not going to put the cape on Superman? What the fuck's right, yeah. wrong with you, dude? Are you a fucking moron? Mm-hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, I think... This project, I don't know what happened with the Sasha Baron Cohen thing because there's two, there's two conflicting stories. Uh, but by the way, can you hear me? Because my oh yeah, I can hear you better. perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, before Cohen came on, the idea was to do what this movie delivered: Queen, getting ready up to ending with Live Aid. Okay, Cohen comes along, and then he gets fired, and then you hear this weird story he said on Howard Stern about. How it's oh, Freddie's gonna die in the middle, and the band's gonna carry on in the end. Oh God, that would have been terrible. Yeah, well, and that's what he said. He's like, nobody wants to see that shit. Nobody cares it, it, about you, which is true. They care, but you're the big look. You're the a huge Queen fan. How did you feel when Paul Rogers was announced to sing for the fucking band? Okay, I like Paul Rogers. I love okay? Paul Rogers. I, I I like Bad Company. I love Queen. Putting Paul Rogers. In Queen equals bad Queen. <laughs> it does. That's right. He's just, just look. He's that's not the ace for that place. Okay, it's he's not that guy. That was like getting the fucking guy from Creed to sing for the Doors. Right. I mean, they did that shit. Right. The the answer that and look, I haven't seen him with Adam Lambert. I, I've seen I've YouTube seen videos. Yeah, and videos like that, and he's fine. You know, when he stops auditioning for every song, but right. he's got a fantastic voice. He's the guy. He's doing well. They're sticking with him. Once again, I think I've said this before, the person that should have taken that place... I already know where you're going, and I mm -hmm. agree with you. Yeah, right. George Michael. George right. Michael should have been the guy that George Michael couldn't get it because he's obviously dead. Who would you go with? Oh, now? Mm -hmm. No one. Right. Stop. All right. All right. Yeah. Stop. Yeah, just be okay. an ambassador to your yeah. legacy. That's pretty yeah, much just, it. Yeah, that's it. 
after uh, after seeing George Michael at that at that fucking Wembley concert, mm-hmm. dude. I mean, I understand. I mean, George Michael, he had nothing to prove. He was a massive pop star, but I mean, he right. was a guy who rebelled against being a pop star. Do you think he wants to go front? Probably one of the most iconic fucking bands of all time. Right. Probably no. not. Well, Fuck, and, no. and he was also quite reverential to Freddie, and pretty much knew he was just like. I don't want to tarnish the legacy. This is yeah. You well, know, and that's and it. Like, to him, his own thing. Oh, yeah. and and that's it. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of there's a lot of of uh, of responsibility that's with that. I mean, dude, George Michael, look, highly influential guy. Mm-hmm. Both him and Mercury homosexual. I mean, that's a big fucking torch to carry, man. I mean, yeah, dude, there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of similarities there between. I mean, I'm not talking just being gay. I'm talking about man. You're talking about meteoric icon fucking people you know so yeah that is a huge legacy to carry Uh, i i'd like to try and get to the idea of the what was good about yeah yeah that that's right what's good and what's bad okay the let me start with the bad okay okay and i hate i hate talking about well you know scott's seen it i don't want to put anything in anybody's head if you haven't seen it. no go on i i've already read so much about it and it's already existing first of all it's a watchable film okay i went i've seen it twice Okay, obviously it's watchable. The, yeah, it's watchable. The problem is, first of all, right out the gate, like I said, that the the conflicting stories, the PG thirteen rating. I go, oh, okay, I kind of winced at that, but all right, look, you want to try and reach a broader audience, you have to do PG thirteen because old people don't keep buying your records. You got to cultivate the longevity, so you go for the younger audience. Okay, I get it. You can still do a lot of crazy shit with a PG thirteen film. That isn't what bugged me. These are the things that bothered the shit out of me as a Queen fan who's waited a long time. I'm ready for liberties to be taken with the film. The inconsistency in the timeline aggravated me. The You've got, like you said, Brian May and Roger Taylor have a heavy hand in this thing. They should know better. Should look at that and go, okay, no, that doesn't go here. You know, we're making a film... Put it in order. How hard is that? Look at the screen. This didn't happen here. Don't put this here. Just film it that way. Uh, but the overall story, this live aid being the triumph, it's fine. The problem I have with that is things leading up to live aid, trying to get everything in. This bullshit story about the band breaks up and there's this turmoil and they haven't played together for years. And then Freddie comes back and goes, you know, I want back in. I, I, I want to get back with you guys. And I fired this guy and everything's fine now. And we're going to do this. Okay. And they get back together. And then as they're practicing, he decides to drop the bombshell. Oh, by the way, I have AIDS, but I don't want to talk about it. Let's go play a gig. It's like you're trying to squeeze a lot of things in there. To me, that's just a – I could have found eight things you can pull out and replace with real – things that were a better story so they never broke up no not so, once so in other words they had to turn so correct me if i'm wrong they're saying that freddie mercury decides to go off on his own and mm-hmm. basically through his own bullshit he has the realization that he should have been with his bandmates the whole time yes it's his oh, solo oof. album i think that oof. is kind yeah, of amplified and, to be this thing that actually broke the band up. yeah which right right which had a which had a tiny like that, that solo album had a tiny cameo in it that pisses me off. Once again, you've got Roger Taylor and Brian May's name all over this thing. Mm-hmm. You've got Freddie going to the band saying, you know, look, I'm going to go do a solo record. You know, I, I need to do something different. I've been offered this much money. And the band going, what the fuck are you doing, Freddie? Why are you doing that? While all in my mind going, Roger Taylor, you had two solo albums out before Freddie did. Yeah. Y'all were basically just taking a break from each other to relax and calm down there was so much touring and just so much shit they were now, dealing with but are these documented things yes okay so in other words yeah. now yeah, i'm wondering that, if this now, was some kind of hidden thing that these guys felt or something no this was just even even freddie mercury said that's like look we just we took a break to just kind of flush out our own stuff yeah do yeah do your own thing right yeah. they really hadn't played together for a couple of months they had just come off the works tour before Live Aid. They didn't want to do Live Aid because they were tired. Yeah. 
And they were basically, Live Aid had to convince them, hey, this is a huge stage, and you guys kind of need it right now. And they were like, all right. They reluctantly went in and did it, rehearsed their ass off for it. The triumph of Live Aid is that after that 20 minutes, which is the greatest 20 minutes in rock history, they go, you know what? Yeah, we're this is us. We need to did, recharge them. They to were keep about going. to break up, and then they stayed back yeah, together. Kinda, yeah, kind of, sort of. I mean, so they, in other they, words, they that's so where the, up, so that's where the triumph of the story should have come correct, from. Correct, yeah. because they they weren't so much about to break up, but I think they were just they were exhausted with each other, and that just kind of said like, yeah, all right, this is a thing. Let's keep doing. And to me, Wembley, the following year, the Wembley tour and everything else, their last tour. That's what it should have ended it. It probably should have ended it because now you've got a guy who's like, man, I can't tour anymore because I'm dying and I'm just sick. Right. And I would have loved to have seen that. I would have loved to have seen the attention paid to here's a rock band, their lead singer, which is this iconic, this superstar. Everything about him was already Hollywood. You didn't need to change the story. He does all of these things because that's who he was. Didn't didn't aunt, didn't say accept me because I'm gay. Didn't care whether you knew or not. Didn't bother to talk about it. Just wanted to do the music. Gets AIDS. Now he's got this huge disease that he cannot share with the public because it doesn't just come down on him. It comes down on the guys around him. Now it's it's messing up their lives. Keep it private. Protect himself. Protect those around him. Probably. You well, know, and then should have come and, and out then on and top something. of that too is is that people start digging in personal corners of his life that he probably didn't want them to go. I mean, right, and he didn't want people buying the music out of sympathy. I don't think, I, honestly, I don't think Freddie Mercury was 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 completely gay. I think that the the gate swung a right. bunch of different ways yeah, he, because he had a long time girlfriend mm-hmm. that, from what my understanding is, she got like his entire estate, but yeah. but she was pretty open to. I think that it was a thing to where it was it was a it was a uh, it was an unconditional love kind of thing, right? And I mean that's what Brian May. I mean I can only go off of what the living members say. They say he was a fucking wild man, dude. Yeah, when he was mm-hmm. when when he hit that level of success. He'd have sex with anything. That was it. Right. You know, I mean that's pretty much what and it you was. Just, and look, you were just in a world where you didn't know that that disease, what it was, where it had yeah. come from. Nobody knew, right? Uh, and so I would have loved to have seen the the human spirit of dealing with that while still making these great records after the fact you had the miracle come out after that and then innuendo and then he died and you listen to these albums and you listen to this man singing knowing full well he's got a disease that's just killing him yeah well i mean look at black star from bowie i mean it's a, right. he recorded this Somewhere. album Correct. knowing he was going to die right and so you've got these these great records and I would love to have seen that, and I I feel almost offended and insulted for the people that don't know that story. It's like, oh my God, you could have, yeah. it could have just been at least laid out, see, just now a taste. I, hate it. I haven't even seen it. it, it don't, I, and that's what I'm trying to don't hate the movie. Go go see it. I invite anyone to go see it. What I love about it is that it is bringing in Queen fans. Right, people are like. Oh, I love this band. I'm so, oh, man, I can't believe that this happened. And I cried for the last half. I'm like, you cried? I didn't cry. I cried because was I was pissed. Well, yeah, you were disappointed. Yeah, <laughs> I was I mean. very disappointed because I just didn't like that story. I was ready to accept liberties. I even sat there and thought, well, if they gave me the same move me, a movie and put it in order, would I have liked it? Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. Because I mean, the it, story still pissed me off. Right. Well, so, so I mean, so that's it. So, so now you're a Queen super fan. Mm-hmm. And now, Scott, from your perspective, I mean, all of the things that that. And well, hold on, r- really quick. The good things that you're going to say, I'm sure you're going to say that Rami Malek's performance was fantastic. Brilliant. Yeah. He, he, to me, that's that's Oscar. All right. He was so he was great, and I'm yeah. sure he may not get it, but it, it's. Everyone that I've spoken to, they say that the Wembley portion of the movie is worth the ticket price. Yeah, it is. It really is, and it's inspiring that that end. But it's just, I think there was a bigger story, a bigger inspirational story there that they just completely missed. I can really so appreciate your your review. Yeah. Unless no, there's going to be a Bohemian Rhapsody two, I think we missed it. You know? yeah. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna leverage in here what uh, Scott Allen Perry had said because he's an enormous Queen fan too, and apparently. 
there are a lot of issues with the uh, the gay love interest for Freddie, who actually he's sort of the wrecking ball of the of the band in the film. Right. He's the one that says you should have your own solo career, and uh, the fact of the matter is is that uh, he was a much more I guess uh, friendly participant in Freddie's life, and Freddie actively pursued him in the gay bars. Like, as a matter of fact, the first time he hit on this guy, he apparently told him to fuck off. And, uh, but Freddie kept at it. In the film, apparently, this, this like, kid, he's kid, is at a party. So and he's Freddie Yoko Ono. You're talking about Jim Hutton. I think his so, yeah. His boyfriend. Yes. Yeah. Is, uh, apparently, he's seduced at one of Freddie's parties. Like yeah, kind of. So and... it's like a, there's just a brief, you know, hey, we got to fit Jim Hutton in here. How do we do it? So right. Jim Hutton basically in the movie is Yoko Ono. Well, no, 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 no. Jim Hutton no. is actually his boyfriend till the end that it passed away. The, there's a bigger issue of Freddie's manager, like personal manager, not assistant, but manager at the time, Paul Printer, who had come along with um, John Reed's team and all that as far as management and everything and just kind of fell into and I think he and Freddie had a had a relationship briefly but he didn't realize that Printer was just doing a lot of shady shit personally I think the ball it came down to Freddie firing him after like two years after Wembley after Live Aid because he came home and found his house just trashed like this guy was just basically taking advantage of him. Yeah, right. And he's like, you're, you're gone. you got to go. And then right after that, Paul went and sold the story of Secret Freddy to the British tabloids. And Freddy just was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. And just really withdrew yeah. and started cutting off people close to him. And now he's like, I can't trust anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you well, know. apparently but that's in not the how film... It, in the film, it yeah. doesn't happen that way. Right. Well, no. apparently in the film, he just sort of corners him at a party. Yeah, Clinton. and and ravages mm-hmm. him, and uh, the issue that a lot of people are having is that is uh, in a, a massive liberty with Freddie's story because Brian Singer is the guy that directed it, and that's what Brian Singer was accused of doing to kids that didn't want that shit to happen. Right. So that's him kind of putting himself in the movie and kind of throwing Freddie's interesting uh, yeah. under the under under the bus oh okay and that seems like a legitimate criticism freddy's got yeah. a whole lot of bus to go under in this movie yeah okay <laughs> he really he does man i feel terrible you know well i mean that's the thing you know it it, it becomes difficult to to kind of watch a movie like this because you know you you kind of like going off of the more traditional storylines of the published material yeah you know, I mean, it's the same old thing. It's what happened to Freddie Mercury. It's what happened to the band. It's what happened to everyone surrounding them. And then there's the truth of what really happened. Yeah. And those are things that you'll never know. But, I mean, you know... It, Not it, if HBO does a miniseries. Right. Well, I, it seems to me, from what I'm hearing um, and, and what I've done with this, seems like the movie should have focused less on Queen and should have just focused on Freddie Correct. Mercury. And they, and they should have made a movie yeah. about him. And, and instead of naming the movie Bohemian Rhapsody, you know, it should have been something different. Mercury. You know, or even Bohemian go. Rhapsody, but it's not about Queen. It's about Freddie Mercury. Because even Bohemian Rhapsody sort of takes a backseat in this film. It's there. They show him making the, the, the... And I loved all that stuff, and I agree with all you. Right. that Them in the studio was great. And once again, didn't quite happen that way. But I can accept that for film purposes, you trying to get all this stuff in. It mm-hmm. was fun moments. Well, it's the same thing with and, Love and Mercy. Love and Mercy, which is a movie about Brian Wilson. Mm-hmm. John Cusack mm-hmm. plays the... Older version of um, of 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 uh, Brian Wilson, uh, Brian Wilson and, and Paul Dano plays the young version. I thought it was a fabulous movie. I, did I thought too. it was very good. As did I. Mm-hmm. I got into a little tiff with your bandmate I Jack Mealy. Yeah, and Jack said, "You know, yeah, Jack but, lives and but, breathes Pet Sounds." But Jack's issue was was the thing with it is well, it wasn't an accurate portrayal of Pet Sounds. I'm like, well, dude, it really wasn't about Pet Sounds. Right. It was about his relationship with this woman and the fucking people that like basically drugged him to take control of his career. Right. And, I mean, I, I can appreciate the fact that, I mean, dude, if, if you're, I mean, and no offense to Jack, I, I love him like my brother, but, I mean, mm-hmm. but, dude, if you want to watch something about pet sounds, watch a documentary about pet sounds if you're looking for something that's accurate to that. But I thought the movie was fantastic. I thought yeah, it was very I, good. I did, I did too. And, I Jesus, Paul Dano 
Good God. Holy man. shit. I mean, dude, like, I mean, yeah. But uh, moving forward with this, um, you know, and, and, and to cap this thing off with a uh, with, 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 uh, bow rap, you know, I'm hearing that this same director is doing a biopic about Elton John. And now what I'm hearing about this Bo- Bo- Bohemian Rhapsody movie, I don't know if I'm really excited to see. Elton John. In fact, we'll have to have fucking well, Molas on. We'll have to have fucking Molas on in here to to, right. to give us the one on that one. But know? here's the funny thing: I've seen that, and I know it's well. Fletcher is doing the Rocket Man film, correct? Uh huh. It looks really good, and you've already given it to me right up front in the trailer, based on a musical fantasy. Oh okay. well, I mean, all right. Then if then that's the case, I'm ready to accept whatever you're about to give me. So what we're gonna? This is basically gonna be Cirque du Soleil, Beatles love, correct? Elton John, oh, okay. right? So, right. In which and and your boy that's playing uh, Elton is a fantastic. Oh, actor. oh yeah, Terry. Yeah. 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 He's commercial. He's that, fucking uh, phenomenal. I'm assuming you've seen that commercial, the uh, your song commercial no. that's making yeah. the rounds on the internet. Yeah. No, but I have to look it up. Okay, it's, it's outstanding. It's, right? Because I just look when he. When they showed that trailer and you see him from behind walking, I'm like, my God, he's got Elton's walk hey, down. He's just. Oh, I didn't I'm, know there was a, so there's a trailer. Yeah, for Rocket yeah, Man. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's, yeah, there's a teaser. Oh, oh it's, never... and it's great. The, the Is ter- it Brian Singer directing it? You said no, 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 no. It's, it's the guy who took over from Singer for the Queen movie. I see. Yeah, so the cinematography looks, I mean, exactly like but- Bo Rap. You're, okay. Chris, you're saying that you don't know that you would go see this film because of the same director. I can't blame that director for Mm-mm. the Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, I can't I blame either. May and Rod for that. Oh no, I I, I totally agree I do with too. that. I think I think Brian May and Roger Taylor. This is pretty much their fucking movie, and and I think that's probably part of it too. Maybe Brian Singer bumped yeah. a lot of heads with right. these guys. And shame on them. I, I really say that, you know. And, and look, and I love them both. Yeah. Simply because they're Queen. But wow, how could you even look at that script and go, yeah, that sounds good. You know, we know it's Hollywood. You have some respect. No, we got to change up something. We get, This makes Freddy look like an asshole. What about the actors that played the other characters? I like like who like the guy who played Brian May and Roger Taylor. I would you could have sworn they went back in time and snatched Brian I, May. I, yeah, the Brian wow. May actor, the guy I saw him just in the trailers, and I was like, "Cheese, man!" He, it's like he's like a clone. Yeah, it's holy crazy. shit, dude! Just the the uh, you know the breathiness of his talk, his his facial expressions in the film, they got all of that. They nailed it. Wardrobe, everything, so spot the, so on. So the casting was great. Yeah, so yeah. they paid so much attention to that detail and then missed the boat on the overall story. I mean, all the way down to getting a Pepsi cup right on right. the piano at Live yeah. Aid. Yeah. So you can do that, but you can't get the story correct or the timeline. Look, my wife had to lean in. She goes, you okay? When they, <laughs> when they, she did. When they flashed across the screen, London, 1980, and then it flashes to Freddy, and he's got the mustache. I went, oh, fuck you. Uh, and, and there was one point where she's like, you all right? I'm like, I'm annoyed. Because they haven't even gotten to the We Will Rock You scene. And that was in 77. How are you going to sit there and tell me this is 1980? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, that, well, that's that's it, man. I mean, you're in it for the, for the purity of the story. Yeah, and I mean, like I said, I get... These are the liberties that I let them get away with. They start working on the first record, but they're working on a song from the second album. I get it. You got to get that in. Yeah, things well, happen. Right. Those things I let go. Uh, even when they're making Bohemian Rhapsody and they're all in the one place, like, look, man, you can't tell the entire story of making Night at the Opera. You get that stuff in. But the overall, just like I said, the timeline. Here they yeah. are. They're, then they're going on tour. They haven't even written Night at the Opera yet. Fat Bottom Girls is playing. That came out an album after We Will Rock You. We haven't even gotten to We Will Rock You yet. Yeah, I'm losing wow. my mind here. So yeah, those are the those <laughs> yeah. are little, yeah. Well, it's kind of like the dude you know he's like telling the exa- you know telling the fucking kid in Fast Times at Richmond you know if you want to fucking nail some ass you know pop on Led Zeppelin four. So he pops on Led, Led Zeppelin, Zeppelin four yeah, and, and it's, it's fucking cashmere. Yeah. I'm like that's on physical graffiti, right? Right, right. That's right. That's you know? right. <laughs> and so and and it, I think it's just what pisses me off is that it's like if I were in the same room with Brian May. And he started telling me this story. I'd be like, douche. 
I, I mean, know you're wrong. I can see the scene from the, the South. Look, I can see the scene from the South Park movie where fucking Brooke Shields is sitting there with Terrence and Philip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Once I farted on instead of Blue Lagoon, this fucking it, it just just slapping Brian him. May in the face. I would. I'm like, dude, are you? you so, so, what did you think about our movie? Right. Yeah, <laughs> that. That's what I think. I Fucking mean, awesome. I, just because it, it's, it's upsetting to know that you know the story and that the guy's going to come up and tell you a completely different one. Uh, like, Why'd you see it twice? He wanted uh, to make sure it sucked. It's like uh, when uh, I saw uh, episode uh, one. Right. <laughs> uh, sort of. You, you might be right. Look, my wife's like, I want to go see it again. I'm like, why? Oh, okay. <laughs> and she goes, look, let's just go see it. She loved it, well, and okay. which I appreciate. I'm glad she loved it. A lot of people do. Well, yeah, and I, I said, and she yeah. says, look, we went with a lot of people, which we did, we ever, and, you know, I said, well, look, now that the hype has kind of died down, let me go give it another shot. I'll sit through it again, but I'm sitting there, and I'm like, oh, why am I doing this to myself again? Right. Oh, no. And I just, I even started to doze off the second time. Ooh. And it just was like, man, come on. So, in other words, you're not buying this on Blu-ray? No, probably not. <laughs> I think I even told them on Not Real. I'm like, you guys need to wait till this comes out on TBS to watch this shit. Like, Jeez. Yeah. Well, it, there it is. There's the official review. Of, you know uh, why I might. Rap. You know why I might buy it because I at least want to see. There are deleted scenes. I want to know Behind that there the might be a director's dude, cut or something. Fuck that. Wait, wait until do to hit YouTube six months after it's out, man. Watch it on right. YouTube and make sure if it's worth it. And that's another thing, too, is, man, on top of it also, well, you know, I'd like to get it just for fucking Wembley. Dude, pipe that shit through your TV, No, I got dude. Wembley. I have yeah, live Wembley. Yeah, if you got yeah. the actual Wembley, I'm then who gives that. a fuck? Right, that's it. You know, I, I think that would, that would be something that would pull me into buying that piece of shit just because. But, because I... Because you're a completionist. I've, I've already... So, probably so. Yeah. That's probably what it is. Even on YouTube, they showed, like, and here's some scenes that were left out of the film that, you know, and you got to get a British girl to talk about it, I guess. Yeah, right. And I'm... Even the the scenes they were describing, I went, ah, uh, yeah. Why wasn't that in? You know, mm. don't tell me how you're writing. We will rock you. I don't give a shit. Anybody could write. That's yeah, easy. Right, I don't need right. you to look, guys. It's like this, you know. And even Roger Taylor going, I don't get it. Come on, leave that out. Then like they did have a scene where they showed him writing crazy little thing called love. I went, that would have been awesome. Yeah, oh, wow. and that yeah. would have basically put that in, and then you wouldn't have had to put it in for Live Aid, which they didn't do, right? It's because they left some songs out of the Live Aid. Twenty I'm, minute concert, fifteen minute part in a movie. Correct, <laughs> correct. But you do what you have to do, right? You know? And I'm just glad they released the Live Aid audio. The soundtrack's great. Yeah, okay. I mean, yeah. you can't go wrong with the soundtrack. Yeah, well, of course. I mean, you know? uh, so I don't know, man. I actually say, like I said, if you love it because you don't know, fantastic. For this, probably for the same reasons, I thought Ray was a great movie. I don't know a lot about Ray Charles. They told a pretty good story, and there even after go. I went back and read, I went, well, you know, it wasn't too ridiculous. And it's right. just Ray Charles. You there, really only had a lot to, to work. I mean, with. there was there was some some bullshit yeah. in the Ray Charles movie, some pretty significant bullshit. Correct. But, but the thing with it is. It, I think you hit the nail on the head, and it's like Scott. Scott, you probably enjoyed this movie because of exactly it. You probably didn't know the the things of Queen that you knew with him. Well, and you even, just enjoyed the movie. Even after I talked to him about it, yeah, and I still enjoy it. But I enjoy it like I j- enjoy JFK. It's like I saw JFK. I know some of that stuff is bullshit, but I think it's a good movie. Yeah, but, you know, and it's the same thing with Queen. Like the the thing I would say with this movie, it made me look into what happened more and more it's like oh well what really did happen right but you and i had a good point it's like it seemed like they tried to cater to this audience that doesn't know anything about queen when you simply could have drawn them in right by catering to people who did know about queen because it's still because it's still a great story yeah it's a way better story and i think that's what offends me and i tried to like well let me knock that off is it still a good film it's watchable it is a bit choppy it does come off like a vh1 flick you know, oh yeah. That, well, that's what right. I heard. It, it I, really I, does. Some from from what I read, and I think this, based on what you're telling me, is that somebody basically said it's um somebody basically took Wikipedia and wrote a script based on Wikipedia. Except it's not correct yeah. because if they would have based it on Wikipedia, it probably would have gotten a better. Yeah, I think the Wikipedia article might be better than the movie. Well, I, from what I saw was is that it, a lot of the critics they said you know we were kind of wanting more because you know. For all of the things that you described about Freddie Mercury and all the things that he went through, yeah, those things don't shine through in this movie. Right. And, and I think I, those are the things that people 
really want to know. They want to yeah. know the struggle of someone who is so fucking influential. Dude, there will never be another vocalist like that fucking guy. No, and there's not going to be another movie. Ever. And I mean, that that's it. I mean, I think the thing with it is you have somebody that is like that. I mean, dude, like Jim Morrison, honestly, I think Jim Morrison has a lot of the, the, the shit that he has because he fucking died young. Mm-hmm. And I mean, he died young and he was at the time when they came to that time when, when blues was really forming in the rock and roll. I think that if Jim Morrison was still alive today. Yeah. He'd say like, dude, it's a fucking singer of the doors, but I don't mm-hmm. think that it would be as big as, mm-hmm. as it is no. now. And I'll tell you, reading a lot of stuff about Jim Morrison, there's a lot of bullshit artistry going on with that fucking storyline a shitload in oh, fact his, well, it's oliver stone his, too. well exactly. and on top of that well his sisters his sisters said straight up it's like i don't know where the fuck he came up with this dead indian on the road right, shit. we right. never saw that that's oh that's yeah. we don't know where the fuck he came up that's with oliver that. stone with his imagery again watchable well but i mean movie. But, but he's the one that but, right. but watchable movie and and that's exactly it i think the thing with it is is that's what a lot of critics and even a lot of music critics they said, we wanted to go into this movie knowing one of the most influential voices and personalities of in the history of rock and roll. One of the fucking greatest. We wanted to kind of know more instead of just a fluff piece that basically fucking whacks off the band. Right? I mean, you know? I, I, I think if you take any band, like if you're not a huge Queen fan and you hear Dickie's critique and say, well, what band would I be able to relate to that... Like, if they did that with you 2 if they put Octung Baby before Joshua Tree, I'd hit the fucking roof, you know? Yeah. So, Which is why I'm careful about telling people before right. they've seen it. Like, look, man, just go. Joey Pitcher asked me, you know, like, what do you think? Did you see it? No, go see it. Yeah. Just yeah, go well, watch. Well, that's it. I, it. Here's the other. Now, going from this perspective, I mean, a Queen documentary or something like that. That's what, a great one. Uh, that's what I was going to ask you. What what what's something you can direct people to to watch? That Who Wants to Live Forever doc that I I sent you the link, which you can find it on YouTube. And the guy that plays Freddie in that, John Blunt, is incredible. He Almost looks think, just like him, right? Oh, does he? He looks I think I know like what you're him. He about. sounds like oh, him. Oh, so this is actually this is no. A, a, it's a, like a actor portrayal sort of. Oh, really? So all right, so with, with interviews, stuff in the, yeah, with interviews in the middle. I don't think they use any of Queen's music because I don't think it's licensed for this particular. Story. And it's right. called Who Wants to Live Who Forever. To live you can forever. watch it on YouTube. You can watch it on Fuck, YouTube. I'm down. It's, dude, it is fabulous. And it's the movie you should have gotten. Really? Just with the with the Queen stuff. Nice. I, nice. I actually, you know what I'd like to see, and I'd like this with every group that was a super group, but I'd love to see like an HBO type miniseries where literally each episode was the name of the album. Oh, it'd be perfect. Wouldn't that yeah. be awesome? That'd be great. They they tried to do that with a, it was actually a fictional show, and I thought it was really sad it didn't go on. It was called Vinyl. Yeah, yeah. and um, yeah, I, the, the some of the some of the episodes I love the episode with Zeppelin in it. I mean, the guy who played Robert Plant, I was like, fuck, dude, that's yeah. fucking crazy. I mean, like, it, See, but but that, that was really cool. But but yeah, I mean, it, it ended up. Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody reminds me of just when you said that that movie, uh, the. CB, what was it? CB, CBGB, yeah, the that movie. Oh, okay. have you seen that? No, no, uh-uh. no. Okay, fantastic about, oh. uh, huh? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, it's about the about the club right. in New York, and it's not entirely true at all. Watchable film, and the people that were in it were spot like the guys that were playing the police in the end of this movie. You thought they got the real police. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Wow, okay. It's great. It, it's a very, very enjoyable film. Um, I wanted to say that I felt like Bohemian Rhapsody, uh, what was I going to go with that? when it, We were talking about it earlier, and it, it sprung me what it, it felt kind of just chopped up like a particular movie, and now I can't think of what it was. But it's one of those films where it's like, you know, yeah, it's good, but you can tell it's just... Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, I, honestly, look, I appreciate your... your I, honestly, dude, if I went and saw the Queen movie and not knowing this shit, I, I'd probably like it. I'm, I'm not going to not gonna lie to you. You're not going to... I'd probably like it. You're not going to not like it. Okay, like, I can't even tell you that I hate it. I'm just disappointed in it. Yeah. I'm frustrated. Okay? Yeah, it just, it just feels... It feels really short, really rushed. You're not getting a lot of the... Mm, that came with that band. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just almost made for television. Yeah, so in other words, you feel that a band that's that grandiose should have more 
more gravitas. Yeah, more movie. Oh, I agree. Agree. I don't need. I totally agree. I don't with need you. warts and all, but I need a little bit more compelling yeah, of a, you know, wow, like holy shit, listen to him. That was the other thing too. You got the end credits. It's the show must go on right after the don't stop me now. And it's like show must go on. It's perfect. It sets up the whole movie they never made. Yeah. Huh. Even huh. even when he's looking in the mirror and they're playing Who Wants to Live Forever, which came out after Live Aid, you're like, look, right there. You know the direction you want to go in. Why are you not doing it? It amazes me that iconic as Queen was, dude. Like, two fucking goofy-ass movies they get the soundtrack for. Flash Gordon and the Highlander. And in fact, what's funny is that album, that, that It's a Kind of Magic album... The beginning track on that yeah, is um, not even is, 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 is yeah, yeah. It's, right. from, it's from it's Iron Eagle Iron Eagle it's from Iron Eagle yeah I, used so, to I mean love, it was a it was a soundtrack within a soundtrack I used to so. love helping people when I was working at Camelot they were coming to me man I can't find the Highlander soundtrack I'm like you've just come to the right person <laughs> <laughs> follow me yeah right like, what are you kidding me all this time I'm like yeah it's right here man yeah it was a fucking album I imagine it's, it's a that, great record it is a fucking fantastic record and and a pretty good movie just real yeah. shitty sequels yeah so. look even Flash Gordon is terribly great. It, oh yeah, you know? it is terribly great. I was about to say, dude, don't. I mean, don't, no, don't, I would don't. never knock that movie. I, look, I got when it came out on DVD. Oh, yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> I can watch. Look, my dad took me to see that movie when it came out, and this is a true story. We even talked about this because he went with me to see Bohemian Rhapsody. We went to see Flash Gordon when it came out. I think we were over at Lakeside Cinema, and we watched the whole film. And the lights came up, like watched the credits, and he goes, "You like that?" And I said, yeah, Dan, and yeah, it's fine. I mean, I'm like, I think five, you know, four or five when it had come out. It was at 1980. And he goes, okay, great. Now we're going to watch it again. Because you could back then. You could just stay in the film. And, yeah, I, right, and right. he said, and this time, pay attention to the music. And we wow. watched, And we watched it again. And at that, I'm like, whoa, you know. And it was a real, it was a nice intro to, you know, by the way, that's your dad's favorite band. Yeah, so wow okay my dad yeah. took me to see flash gordon and this was the critique he gave my mom so how was it it was all right um it had a lot of rock and roll music in it <laughs> <laughs> yeah they did so that was sid's that was sid's yeah. review <laughs> but it's, your it's, dad made you sit and watch it again and listen to the music mm -hmm. that's intense so that's fucking awesome very, very cool yeah and explains and, why you love that so and, much because yeah, I was and, always like, and look where well, we are today. And and, and <laughs> speaking about looking at where we are, I'm sitting here looking at the time. We have fucking run through, so we're Sorry. gonna we're gonna have to save we're gonna have to save Stan Lee for the next visit. Yeah, but, he'll still although I just say yeah. I love Stan Lee and and uh, fuck Bill Maher. That's all I got to say about that. I, look, this is the way I look at it. <laughs> I, I love I, I think Stan Lee. I read I read Bill Maher's thing, and I also read the the other asshole um, Army Hammer. I read both of those. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look, dude, I listen. to... I listen to several sources when it comes to political opinions. Mm -hmm. Bill Maher is one of those. Right. I listen to Bill Maher, and even though I disagree with a lot of shit he says, there's one thing I do have to agree with him. Free speech is fucking vital. You know, and you have the right oh, to indeed. say what the fuck you want to say. Oh, I know. I don't said agree he with the right to say it. I, I don't think agree he's an with asshole him. Yeah, saying it. but he is a fucking asshole. Because he should for saying fucking it. know better. Yeah. It's like, hey, dude, you got tons of other shit to talk about, so find it. Come on, man. Well, it comes down to this. I mean, dude, you're talking about, yeah, oh, comic books are for kids. Yeah, well, you're talking about the creator or one of the creators or conceptualizers of the fucking X-Men that taught what? It taught fucking tolerance. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, everything, yeah. everything that the Marvel fucking age was about was teaching children societal issues mm -hmm. where dc it was, was on the, where dc was on the other side saying fight the bad guy hey look you know it, it basically retelling the greek myths and and all that shit mm -hmm. you had marvel on the other side that said look we're going to make these everyday heroes that people can identify with yeah and i and bill Maher, for a guy who's like that who's actually who's a guy who always says that he has the privilege of painting on the cave walls I would actually think right. that find it pretty surprising that he would piss on somebody else's cave drawing. Exactly. I think he gets into his zone too much of trying to be the provocateur, and he probably never got into comics. But yeah, I, I mean, there's some. I mean, I, I would, I would, I would say that if Chad Lott were on a real time, he'd fucking take him to the mat and wipe the floor with him because Sandman is great fucking literature. It here's, really is. Here's irony for you. You know what movie Bill Maher was in? 
Iron Man 3. Oh. Iron Man 3. Yep. Interesting. Yes. What happened is, is that when the Iron Patriot is brought out for the president, Bill Maher and Bill O'Reilly are actually talking heads. There's real time with Bill Maher and there's and there's the O'Reilly factor and they're talking about how Iron Man is re, uh, Iron the, the Iron Patriot is painted and rebranded so they bring that oh. in as a real and Bill Maher is in that movie he's in Iron Man 3 oh interesting yep oh yep. So, GC cab yep so there you and DC he was cab. a DC cab <laughs> and also you know house dude you know house 2 actually you know that's really? right holy shit i forgot about that who the hell are you bozo the clown <laughs> no bozo the death machine <laughs> so. oh wow oh i loved house 2 <laughs> oh, i loved them both fucking great movies yes they were all right well cool um let's go ahead and wrap this up i guess this is going to publish this week um Hope, I don't know what this weekend. What you have on uh, Molly Ringwall Saturday huh, over at Southport Hall. Southport yeah. Hall. Interestingly Saturday, enough, right. the anniversary of Freddie Mercury's death. Oh well, there you go. Oh, wow. And so I'm, will it be a Queen heavy set? N- well, no. We'll just do that one Queen song. They'll okay. do. Also, <laughs> I will be wearing the Wembley outfit. Nice. Oh, fantastic. Oh. Okay. Awesome. Well, that's fantastic, man. And um, give give some of the other some of your other stuff, man. Can we have Pierce Pennyless show? Have a website or Facebook? Or? We got the Facebook. We also have a show coming up at, at Hurricanes on December twenty second. Are y'all gonna play nice. original songs that night? And we're gonna play original songs by other people. <laughs> no, we're gonna do. You know what? No, we'll get. <laughs> they just will not be our originals. No, we. You know what? I'm we, stealing that I, line. I, we will get. We will get originals in. That's Scott called- has inspired us to get back on the. Well, what about some of your what about some of your original tunes? Um, can can that stuff be downloaded, purchased? Is it on iTunes? Not at the moment, no. Right, no, cool, you had to go to a magical show it. a few months ago. Yeah, it was great. Thank you, by the way. That was uh, that was our live aid. It was recharging right there. There I it just is. Wish we'd have had the whole the whole quartet, but you know, yeah. if you want to make a music video, I could shoot it, and uh, we could probably get it together and out before Scott releases his next music video. Which all right, we'll talk after this months ago. Video. Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, look, man, um, we appreciate you coming on, Rick. Hey, thanks for having me. Beautiful guys. stuff, man. I've awesome. wanting to come on this, so thank you. Yeah, right. We've been looking for the right <laughs> yeah. opportunity because it was like, dude, like, what do you watch? I watch Gotham. Fuck, we don't watch that. So hey. we, have to wait till, we have to wait till Queen. I'm so. sorry. I was watching so DC-inspired stuff. Yeah. <laughs> my, my bad. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, this is a good cameo. <laughs> Fuck you was right. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right, well, look, we appreciate you all listening. Jump over to the PPB Guys group over on Facebook. You can join there, you know, chat back and forth with us during the week in between the uh, times for the next show. Also, jump over on iTunes. Please subscribe and leave us a review. Five stars only. Um, Also, do the same for our friends over at Scary Thoughts and Not Real Radio. Thanks for listening. End scene.